How's it going guys? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be showing you how to use slots in JavaScript web components. Now slots are really useful when you want to pass your own uh, content or HTML markup into a web component and these can be components that you create yourself or if certain libraries support slots, uh, yeah, it's going to be really handy to know how these work. Now, before watching this video, you must have a base understanding of web components. So if you haven't got that, I've been doing a lot of web components uh, content recently on my channel. So you can watch a couple of my recent videos on web components to get an understanding. But if not, stick around and I'll take you through how to use these slots now. So. This here is a profile card web component that I wrote for this video and we have a image on top as well as a user name and a biography on the bottom. So yeah, this is all done using a web component and the code looks something like this. So we have this profile card class extending HTML element of course. I've also got the CSS for all of the uh, different elements at the top here and then down in the connected callback, I'm simply uh, updating the shadow root to have the uh, CSS injected right there. And I'm also outputting those three different elements. So we have the profile image, the name, as well as a little divider here. Then lastly, just the uh, description on the bottom. So yeah, this right here is the existing component. I won't go through it too much, but it is important to mention here that right at the top, I have um, this part which says const description paragraphs equal to then I'm parsing some JSON and I'm mapping here and then I'm just simply creating paragraph tags from essentially just the data set. So let me go into the HTML for this one and we can see here that we have a profile card being outputted. Uh, of course, I'm passing in the name of the uh, user as well as the image URL. And then like I just mentioned before, I've got this JSON here, which is a description which contains a list of or an array of all the different paragraphs that I want inside the bottom part here. So just to reiterate in the profile card JS file, we can see again for the image source, I'm just uh, getting the data set image URL which gets passed in here. If that's not provided, then fall back to a placeholder image, injecting that right here in the template. Then we have the name, same deal, if not provided, unknown. Then down here, once we have all the paragraph tags that were generated from the JSON, we're joining. Now, how does this relate to slots? Well, we're going to improve it um, and use slots as opposed to some other things going on here, namely the JSON parsing. So the main problem with this that I see is that uh, in order to provide some paragraph content for the description, uh, or the biography, whatever you want to call it, um, you need to pass a JSON string into the HTML. This here can get very hard to manage unless you're loading it from an API, which you might be, right? But um, either way, it can get hard to manage, you know, strings like this inside your HTML. You then need to um, deserialize it with JSON parse and even little things like you can see here, I've had to use a single quote for the attribute as opposed to a double quote because with JSON, it only supports double quotes for your string. So you need to, need to use a single quote around it so it actually supports it correctly. So we're going to improve this to use slots instead. Um, but again, just back inside here, this also, you probably don't want to be doing things like this inside your component. Of course you can and maybe it's sometimes appropriate to pass JSON in for tokens and things like that. But yeah, if we can avoid it, then why not? So we're going to be able to get rid of all this here. We're, we're not going to be locked into paragraphs as well. It's all going to work really nicely. No need for join and so on. So how do we do this? Well, the goal is, if I go back inside index.html, the goal is to actually go inside here and provide my own HTML for the description. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two paragraph tags here and I'm going to say 
copy these two strings and paste them inside here. And the same goes for this, just like this. So this here is the goal. I wanna be able to just do this and get these paragraphs in the component. This is of course possible using slots. So if I save this, go back in the browser, we can see nothing actually happens, nothing changes here, okay? Because we provide this information into the profile card, but we actually don't say where these paragraphs should go. So if I go back inside the template here, these paragraphs can go up here, they can go down here, they can go in between here. There is no spot to say, okay, this stuff goes in this position in the template. So that's where your slot is going to uh, come into play. So I'm going to remove this div here, okay? And I'm going to replace this with slot and then name equal to, oh, sorry, my mistake. Let's just do slot for now. I'll come back to name slots at the end of the video, um, but let's just do slot for now. So something like this, okay? If I now save this, go back in the browser, we get the exact same results. But, of course, it's a different way of doing it. I can even get rid of these, uh, this const up here. No need to parse JSON anymore. I can also get rid of the data description as well, just to prove it works, it's back in the browser, and it works as we expect. Refresh, there we go, it still works, okay? Now, what's going on here? Well, what's happened is we've just said, look, this content here is essentially, you know, provided to the component with nothing attached to it. So you've also got named slots. Like I said, I'll get to that very shortly. But um, just for this example, this, this content here is just loose inside the web component. We pass it in, right? Anything like this, okay, so nothing attached to it, no names, no sections, Anything like this is going to fall into the unnamed slot that you provide inside your template. So ideally, there should only be a single slot like this where you have no name attached to it. So whatever's here, bang, goes inside here. Now, before uh, moving to name slots, it's worth mentioning that any styles you apply inside your uh, web component are going to apply to the slotted content. So if I go back in the browser here, we can see that we didn't say for these paragraph tags that they're gonna be centered and they're gonna have this font size and so on, but that all comes from the component styles. If I inspect this, we can see that uh, upon expanding the shadow roots, we have the slot here. We can even inspect that, right? You can reveal it and so on. Um, now, you can see here that if I select this, we have inherited those styles right down here from the host, which I provided at the top here. So yeah, what I'm saying is you're going to have that affected by, uh, you know, by your, uh, your styles here, but you can of course add your own styles. You can say P style color equal to red, save this back in the browser and it turns red. Okay, so that, that, that also works. Um, uh, essentially, look, I guess at, at this point, we've, we've done a, quite a good job in improving um, how this works and, of course, a lot simpler to provide two paragraphs as opposed to having to dress on parts and so on. But an added benefit here too is you can put whatever you want, really. I mean, you can put buttons inside here, you can put lists and so on, and it's all going to work uh, perfectly fine. So really ideal for situations like this where you have a container and then whatever's in the container is mostly going to be up to the feature or the area which the container exists within. So very handy to use these unnamed slots. Another benefit of these or another use case of these slots which is very common is when you have um, buttons. Okay, so you have a custom button element and you want to, yeah, essentially just do something such as button and then you want to say, or I should say here, custom button, right? Custom dash button, you can say uh, click me, for example. You can have this as a slot within your template and then simply, you know, pass that on to your actual button inside the uh, 
uh, template. So very handy for those kinds of things. Now, I want to move forward to named slots because at this point, you know, we've only done the description. And to be honest, if I see a profile card with a name uh, attribute, then a image URL, I might be wondering based on the code itself, what exactly or where does this stuff go? So for a custom button, like I just showed you down here, it might be self-explanatory, but in a case like this, where there's multiple parts, it might be better to use named slots instead. And named slots also have the advantage of being able to provide multiple different slots. Okay, so let's first upgrade this to be a named slot. Let's go back inside index, sorry, profilecard.js, and we're going to name this slot. We're gonna say slot name equal to description, okay? Save this back in the browser and it is now broken, okay? This is because there is no default slot like this anymore. Therefore, we have the same problem as earlier where we don't know where these paragraphs are going to end up. So we need to now say that these paragraphs belong to uh, this particular slot. So let's go here and we're gonna say div with a slot attribute of description, okay? Just like this. We're gonna place the two paragraphs inside there. So now we have a div involved, but this div allows us to essentially section off this content, okay? Save this back in the browser and now it's gonna work perfectly fine because of course your slot name or slot value here matches up with this one right here and it's gonna go in that position. Now, let's make this a little bit better. Let's also have a slot for the name, all right? So let's go back inside the implementation. Let's change this part right here to instead B, uh, slot name of name. Maybe I'll call this username just to clear up all the different names that are going on here. And now once we have this slot, go back inside the HTML, we can get rid of this data attribute, bring this up, make it a little bit neater. And then we can say span slot username equal to decode as a span, right? Save this back in the browser and we get the exact same results. And once again, those styles are coming through from up here inside the name container and then going inside here. So I guess the main difference now between this slot and the description is that this one here has a container. And in some situations, that right there is going to be uh, useful because um, you may want to have specific styles for certain sections like this one here. I want a font size of 24 and a font weight of bot. I actually want these two things specifically for um, the name. Now, there is an argument to be made that maybe you shouldn't use slots here and just use a, um, a simple property. And I think that there is going to depend a lot on the, um, the actual section, right? And uh, whatever it's being useful because... I can also make an argument back to say, well, I actually like this slotted username because I can actually, I can make this an anchor tag if I want, right? I can say a href and then I can say link to my YouTube channel, for example, you know, HTTP, I can say youtube.com forward slash decode software, save this back in the browser and now I can have that link right there. So that's a benefit. And again, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna depend on the, on, on the situation and what you're actually trying to do. So I might keep that right there. Um, but going back inside the profile card, I do want to sort of uh, point out um, a situation where I think, you know, I probably wouldn't use a slot for, and that is things like images, okay? Because with an image, uh, for example, this one, you know that it's going to be an image tag. Okay, because with slots, you can, of course, have your own custom tags here, A or spam, whatever it might be. But with an image, you're kind of locked in to an image tag. And you have the same problem where you want to style it specifically. And you kind of want to bring that control back to your component. And again, I can say the same thing about the name, uh, you know, uh, example. But um, I think it matters more to the image because, of course, yeah, 
you know, you, you, you wouldn't want the people using your component to modify different properties here and um, sort of, you know, have a play with the, the actual tag. Maybe they want to pass a div in instead. So you can get situations where you sort of want that control in the component. And in those situations, I would say use the data attribute instead. Okay, so that is slots in JavaScript web components. If this video helped you out, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video.